Thanks to our title sponsor, Juniper Networks, for helping make Research Saturday possible. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the CyberWire's Research Saturday. I'm Dave Bittner, and this is our weekly conversation with researchers and analysts tracking down the threats and vulnerabilities, solving some of the hard problems of protecting ourselves in a rapidly evolving cyberspace. Thanks for joining us. You know, I actually had this idea sort of come to me a few years back, actually, uh, where I was contemplating how there are some extremely common applications that most organizations are likely to be using. And then sort of wondering to myself, you know, how many of those have an inherent need to communicate with or access resources outside of the corporate network. And so that kind of drew my attention to browsers and what functions might exist that you know may not have been given much attention in that regard. That's David Prefer. He's a student at the Sands Technology Institute. The research we're discussing today is titled Bookmark Bruggling, Novel Data Exfiltration with Brugglemark. I think it's fair to say that browsers, certainly at this point, are fairly sophisticated. I've heard some people refer to them as almost being operating systems in their in their own right. Um, I mean, what sorts of functions drew your attention? I mean, I was just kind of thinking of anything. Um, but what came to my mind actually was bookmarks, like actually just almost right out the gate. Yeah, I mean, well, well and one of the things that came before that was search history. Um, so, you know, whatever you type in the, say, Google or whatever in, in, you know, Google Chrome or Microsoft Edge and stuff like that, you know, that all gets, um, you know, saved offline by the browser. And, you know, bookmarks, I started looking at there and, and turns out that, you know, it does the same thing too. Well, explain for us, for folks who may not be familiar with it, how exactly does this bookmark synchronization work? When you sign into your account uh, in Google Chrome or, or whatever browser that you're using, it synchronizes to clients or clients for Google.com. Um, the, the full URL is in the research paper. Each synchronization that occurs generates an HTTP post request to uh, clients for Google.com, and profiles can then, you know, when you're signed in there, synchronize bookmarks and history and. Uh, extensions, themes, whatever, whatever you want, back and forth with Google. And so, I mean, this is for the user's convenience. So if you're using multiple devices or a, a desktop device, a mobile device, it all syncs automatically. And, and in general, this is a good thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it does wonders for uh, usability. So what was the issue here that you're exploring, the potential vulnerability? Yeah. So, I mean... It, the way it works is, you know, again, you know, browsers feature those built-in synchronization uh, capabilities and bookmarks. They offer, you know, it's, it's a user controlled function, right? So as a user, I can just go in and save a bookmark for any website I want and give that bookmark whatever name I want to give it. It's completely up to me and only me as a user. And so when you've got that sort of flexibility and you combine it with a synchronization function, um, then you have a, a workable channel for data exfiltration, right? So, um, and, and browsers are this, uh, you know, again, it's it's this usability thing, right? So browsers are inherently a consumer first technology um, and, and you know, that's, that's what their goal is there, right? Yeah. So let's walk through what you all discovered here. I mean, let, let's go through it step by step. How did you go about this research? Yeah, so I, I first kind of started out by testing uh, what could I actually put in bookmarks, and it turns out you know pretty much anything. And and I I just stayed to the you know ASCII character set, um, which I didn't have any problems with. But I started testing you know how many characters can I store in a single bookmark, and there isn't an actual hard limit as far as what you can save as a bookmark, but there is a limit in that. A bookmark that has an excessively long name or URL won't synchronize. They they only persist locally, so it'll never synchronize to any of your other computers if it's if it's too long. Hmm. But if you stay within certain confines, um, they will and they synchronize instantly. And and when I did my testing, I, I looked at Chrome, Edge, Brave, and Opera 
and each of them had some very different limits. <laughs> and I, I won't bore you with the details, but where Google will only allow roughly 9,000 or 9,300 characters per bookmark to synchronize, I was able to do 300,000 with Brave. And with Opera, <laughs> I could do 3.1 million characters per bookmark. Uh, which was wow. kind of unreal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's a heck of a descriptive bookmark, isn't it? <laughs> it's, I mean, you might as well just put the whole book in there. Well, I, you know, it's funny that you say that because to give you the perspective there, I used the 1932 novel Brave New World by Aldous Huxley as my uh, test base there. And, and um, it took roughly 60 bookmarks in Chrome. Um, and that was about 500,000 some odd characters in length when I base 64 encoded it. Um, so, you know, for opera, you could fit that book in there three times, <laughs> at wow. least. Juniper Connected Security helps organizations build threat-aware networks that extend security to every point of connection across the network. To learn more, visit juniper.net slash security or connect with Juniper on Twitter or Facebook. That's juniper.net slash security. And now a word from our sponsor, Keeper Security. Keeper is the top rated cybersecurity platform for protecting organizations of all sizes from the most common password related data breaches and cyber attacks. Did you know that 81% of data breaches are caused by weak password security? Keeper is more than a password manager. It's a scalable and customizable security platform that includes industry-leading features such as automated user provisioning, role-based enforcement policies, SSO SAML integration, advanced reporting compliance, breach watch dark web monitoring, and more. Members of the CyberWire community will receive a free three-year personal password manager when they take a business demo. Visit KeeperSecurity.com slash CyberWire to learn more. And we thank Keeper for sponsoring our show. So, I mean, I'm starting to see the issue here. I mean, if I'm someone who's charged with defending my organization against things like exfiltration, uh, I have this user-controlled element and everyone needs to use their browsers for day-to-day -day business stuff. But here's a way that data can be sent out of the organization without really any monitoring. Yes? I mean, there is monitor. I mean, you, um, some, of, and I get into it in my paper, but, uh, you know, there are a few things that you can do from a defensive perspective. So for monitoring, to your point, um, you know, you really can't go wrong with decrypted traffic inspection. And, and most organizations are likely to already have a forward proxy in place that can handle that. Um, but whether or not they're looking at the browser synchronization traffic, you know, that's another thing, right? So let's talk about some of the terms here. Uh, Brugling, what does that mean? Yeah, so it's just a portmanteau of uh, browser and smuggling. Um, and I, I just kind of loosely defined it as, the misuse of a built-in browser feature to transmit or receive data to or from another system. And what do your uh, what do you outline here in terms of potentials for automation? Well, so you know, I and you can do this without any sort of scripting or anything like that. But I I did write a PowerShell script called Brogomark that I have out there on GitHub. And what it does is it takes a raw text file, uh, Base sixty four encodes the data. Uh, splits it up into smaller strings, and then writes those strings as bookmarks. And then from there, those bookmarks are instantly synchronized to any other signed-in machine, which you know could be outside of your corporate network. And Brogomark can then be used to reconstruct the original raw text file on that machine. So are, are, are we primarily thinking about um, like an insider threat here? Because wouldn't Folks on both sides of this need to have access to the user account. Well, yeah, I mean, it could either be an insider threat or it could be an attacker who's already gained access to the internal network. And, you know, maybe they're looking for another sort of covert way um, of getting the data out. Or maybe they are, you know, unable to use some of the other methods that they're, you know, accustomed to using. They're afraid of, you know, tripping, uh, you know, some of the detection mechanisms that they think that the organization might have. Right, right. 
Have you seen any signs that, that this sort of technique has been used by anyone but before your own research on it? Uh, no, I, I have not. However, um, there was some research and I'm <laughs> the person's name. I'm not familiar with how to say it, so I'm going to butcher it. But I think it's Bojan. Um, and then an, uh, there, uh, his last name starts with a Z. I apologize. Um, but uh, <laughs> I, I, I just can't remember off the top of my head. But he had done some re uh, research into uh, extensions that were being used for as a command and control channel um, with, with, with Google Chrome. And I had actually seen that, uh, research come out a little bit before I started my own. And uh, as I mentioned, I've been thinking about this for a few years, but I hadn't done anything with it. And when I saw that, I was like, damn, you know, someone beat me to the punch. But, uh, <laughs> as I read it, I saw that they were, they were sticking to the, the extension. So I thought, okay, well, we'll go forward with bookmarks, but yeah. What is your take on this? I mean, the, the fact that these browsers allow such long bookmarks. I mean, that in itself seems a bit excessive. Yeah, it, it kind of seems wholly unnecessary, at least, you know, especially from the perspective of, you know, say opera doing 3.1 million characters. Um, you know, no one, I don't think anyone's saving bookmarks that are that long. Usually you have a bookmark that says like Twitter or Google or whatever, right? So um, I definitely think that, you know, they could rein in the, the character limit there. But uh, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter so much because it just means I have to use more bookmarks to save that data, right? Mm, right. Because there, there isn't really a practical limit on the number of bookmarks you can have. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's it's funny you brought that up as well. And, and <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what I found in my testing is that profiles could synchronize more than 200,000 bookmarks. And I actually didn't find a ceiling. I just had to cut the testing off at some point. Um, so, you know, suffice it to say that while some users might have, to, you know, 200,000 bookmarks or more, uh, I'm guessing that the average user probably doesn't come anywhere near that. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, what are your recommendations then? I mean, to, to what degree do you think this is a, a serious threat? Uh, and what should organizations be mindful of? I mean, I, I probably wouldn't start panicking um, or anything. I mean, it's it's just another uh, thing that's out there, right? Um, and it's 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 not really a vulnerability or a weakness. It's it's really just abusing a feature. Um, you know, it's 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 not a bug um, by any means. Mm -hmm. It's a feature. Um, but uh, from from a defense point of view, uh, one of my recommendations, and, and again, the research paper goes in depth there, but, uh, you know, the first thing to do is, is to consider whether or not an organization actually needs synchronization enabled, because we can disable it in its entirety through group policy. Um, but, you know, the unfortunate problem there is that it, it probably isn't a, a tenable solution for most organizations to disable that synchronization functionality because it is useful for their users, especially, you know, someone who's working on a laptop and then they got to go catch a, a flight somewhere, you know, using their mobile phone um, to, to access uh, company resources. So uh, in lieu of disabling it completely, a more reasonable option is to use this uh, restrict sign-in to pattern policy that, that Google provides which allows you to specify uh, email domains that are allowed to sign in. So we can limit the email addresses to only those with a domain owned by the organization. It, you know, on that point too, it's, it's also important to note that those group policy options, they can be bypassed by just using another browser. Um, because I can, I can go and install, uh, download and install a different Chromium browser without admin privileges. So if you've got Google Chrome or Microsoft Edge in your environment, I can go and download Brave or Opera or Vivaldi um, and, and use that. And unless you have that restrict sign in to a pattern policy set for each of them, I can just, you know, go and sign in with, you know, an attacker uh, controlled email and, and go on my merry way. So to solve that, it, it, you know, we would really need to start seeing, you know, application allow listing used a lot more often because the, the only alternative is to be on the constant lookout for unauthorized browser executables. Yeah. You know, as you were making your way along this journey, uh, the research that you did here, were there any things that were particularly surprising or unexpected? Um, the, the number of characters in the bookmarks and, and the number of bookmarks that I could synchronize um, were certainly, uh, you know, 
I, when I was testing, you know, that I could have over 200,000 bookmarks, um, as I was climbing my way up there, I noticed the browser like really starting to, to chug a bit. Um, and so, uh, I mean, that was, that was kind of interesting, but, but nothing else really outside of that. Our thanks to David Prefer from the Sands Technology Institute for joining us. The research is titled Bookmark Bruggling, Novel Data Exfiltration with Brugglemark. We'll have a link in the show notes. Thanks to Juniper Networks for sponsoring our show. You can learn more at juniper.net slash security or connect with them on Twitter or Facebook. The CyberWire podcast is proudly produced in Maryland out of the startup studios of Data Tribe, where they're co-building the next generation of cybersecurity teams and technologies. Our amazing CyberWire team is Rachel Gelfin, Liz Irvin, Elliot Peltzman, Trey Hester, Brandon Karp, Eliana White, Peru Prakash, Justin Sabi, Tim Nodar, Joe Kerrigan, Carol Terrio, Ben Yellen, Nick Vilecki, Gina Johnson, Bennett Moe, Chris Russell, John Petrick, Jennifer Iben, Rick Howard, Peter Kilpie, and I'm Dave Bittner. Thanks for listening. We'll see you back here next week.